Fun fact, when I was 19 I actually took part in the filming of a short movie based on one of Cortazar's quirkiest stories, a very short piece called Continuity of Parks, and there's a link to that movie in um, the description box, the movie's here on YouTube, and it's uh, like my, my, I'm credited there as assistant director, which meant that I basically had to go tell people who were standing in the way of our, you know, of the camera to please go away. Um, but who gives a shit? Hi everyone, here's Luka Mitz once again. Today I'm reviewing Blow Up by Julio Cortazar, one of the great names of international postmodernism. Cortazar is the pride and joy of two different literatures, Latin American literature and French literature. He was born, I think, in Belgium by Argentinian parents and he lived in both realities throughout his life and his fiction deals with both worlds and sometimes he deals with the urban life of Paris and, you know, cultivate, the cultivated and cultural life of France. Uh, sometimes he deals with uh, mansions and manor houses in the Argentinian countryside. But both, uh, one thing both of these literatures and these uh, literary heritages have in common is the fact that they are enlightened literatures when it comes to fantastical and supernatural elements. Latin American literature it gave us magical realism, which some people define as basically fantasy for people who speak Spanish, which is kind of an idiot definition, but still. And the French are unenlightened people when it comes to supernatural elements. They were the ones who first recognized the value of people such as H.P. Lovecraft, uh, while the rest of the English world still thought he was an idiot talking about tentacles. And that very easygoing, very stimulating, very natural way of dealing with supernatural and weird and un uh, impossible and unspeakable occurrences is definitely a part of Cortazar's production. To people like me, to big nerd, it's probably the um, most fascinating part of his production. And some of his short stories deal with absurd situations and impossible realities, with a house in the Argentinian countryside where a tiger is roaming between the rooms so that you have to be always careful not to, you know, step into a room where the tiger is or you'll get eaten. Uh, that kind of, of weird shit that's going on all the time and that makes all of his short stories always surprising and always thrilling. For instance, I was reading at one point a story about a housemaid who gets employed by uh, a new family, a new rich family, and these people are weird, they have uh, six or seven dogs in their home, and she starts feeling uh, somewhat attached to these dogs, and I was waiting at any moment for her to change into a dog herself or to become some kind of weird weird dog. And did she do that? Who knows? <laughs> but all of that is possible in a Cortazar story. Sometimes these supernatural and weird occurrences are used to discuss very relatable situations and issues. And for instance, the story about the tiger in the country house, I thought the tiger was there to talk about the way uh, re the relationship between people might deteriorate when they are when they have to live closely together for a long time and maybe even to talk about domestic abuse and such but sometimes these elements are used to problematize the nature of fiction and one of, one very important thing about Cortazar's production is that it is very self-reflective I said at the beginning that Cortazar is a hero of international postmodernism and some of his stories do fall very nicely in the category of postmodernism, whatever kind of, you know, um, uh, criteria or theory you use to describe this category and people such as Brian McHale, who is my favorite scholar when it comes to defining postmodernism, I put, I put links in the description box if you're interested in this stuff, people like Brian McHale do put Cortazar among the you know, the first writers in this new movement. But in general, the great thing about Cortazar's story is that they use this kind of self-reflectiveness and they use this kind of circularity and these quirks in the narrative flow and, you know, the fact that all kinds of weird shit happen all the time and the narrator at times becomes the main character or uh, characters shift between different uh, diegetic levels it, he uses all of these things very naturally. What I mean is that his stories, just as with the best fiction by people such as Italo Calvino, 
never feel like they are a kind of linguistic experiment. They always feel like a story. And sometimes they are dense and difficult, and sometimes they're immensely rewarding, but they always feel like a story. You never feel like this is some kind of college professor trying to make a point about linguistics, as is sometimes the case with you know, WASP postmodernism, or anyway, American postmodernism. It probably shows that I'm a Cortazar fan, but at the same time, I, sh I probably shouldn't give you the impression that all of his stories are some kind of endless fun and endless joyride, because some of them are not. Some of them can be very dense, as I mentioned before, and uh, some of them are written in some kind of almost stream of consciousness -y style, and some of them are very difficult, and whereas many of his stories are wildly imaginative, sometimes you find the occasional story that's just what we would now call literary fiction, just a um, reflective uh, moment of truth, uh, epiphanic kind of story where nothing really happens, and people are boring. The point with this collection, Blow Up, which was previously called um, end of the game, I think. They changed the name for whatever reason. But I think the point with Cortazar's short stories in general, with all of his collections, is that they are a treasure chest. But they are a treasure chest filled with all sorts of treasure, and you'll find beautiful rings in them, but you'll also find amazing magic swords and also plastic toys that light up when you push a button. You'll find all sorts of shit, and my prediction is that it's, it's gonna be very hard that you like all of the stuff you find in them in the same way. Just as I love to bits the quirkier and more supernatural tales, but couldn't really be fucked with the jazzier and, you know, more epiphanic moment of truth kind of stories, other readers will feel the opposite way around. Let me know how you feel about Cortazar's short stories, what are your favorite stories of his, of his Axolotl, and maybe Continuity of Parks are probably among my favorite ones, and let me know about your experience with Cortazar, and do check him out, because he is such an influential writer, and for that reason I talked about, I'm sure you'll find some of his stories that you want, that you'll definitely love, that, that, that's basically assured. Thank you for watching once again, guys, let me know about your experience with Cortazar in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next video, bye guys.